Welcome to section 11.1. All right, gentle people, let's formally begin our discussion on electrochemistry. And what we're going to do is take observations on this experiment that we're going to run. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take a solution of silver nitrate. And in that solution of silver nitrate, I'm going to place this copper metal wire. Now, what's going to happen is after some time, what you'll see is that solution turns blue and you guys kind of see this buildup on my copper wire. So let's go ahead and try to figure out what happened here. So again, here's a cleaner example of that last experiment. So to explain what's happening here, let's look at the atomic level. So what I have here are these silver ions represented by these gray spheres. And what they're going to do is they're going to bump up to my copper surface. Now, once they bump up to that copper surface, they're going to get reduced and they're going to make silver metal. So that's what you guys kind of see grow off the copper wire. This silvery material is actually real silver. So once I transfer electrons from my copper to my silver, I got to follow what happens to my copper atoms. So again, my copper's at the surface. It gives the electron to those silver ions. And what's going to happen is I'm going to form copper ions that float away in solution. Now, copper, when it is in solution, gives you this blue color. And that's why my liquid turned this faint baby blue. Now, you'll notice that when I put these two things together, this reaction happens spontaneously. So I can say that my delta G is less than zero. Now, this is well and dandy, but here's the deal. I am trying to take the chemical energy in my system and turn it into electrical energy. And so what happened here is I did indeed get electrons transferred. They came from the copper and went to the silver. But the problem is, is I couldn't utilize this energy. I could not get any electrical work if I simply dumped my copper into a silver solution. And this is what chemists and battery scientists think about. How do I get electrical energy out of my chemical components? So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to break our reaction down to their half reactions. So to remind you guys, the half reactions, what we're going to write down is our oxidation reaction and a reduction reaction. So in this case, my copper is being oxidized. I'm starting with copper metal and I'm going to copper two plus ions. To do that, I have to produce two electrons. Now, my other half reaction is my reduction reaction. What I had was I had silver ions. Those silver ions grabbed an electron and became silver metal. Now, you'll see that I put a two here, and that's to balance out my electrons, because we can see that my oxidation reaction is producing two electrons, and my reduction reaction is only consuming one electron. So by putting this two here, I can balance out my electrons, and that's why you see it in the overall reaction. And so what it means is that I'm running this second reaction, this reduction reaction, twice as much as I'm running this copper reaction. So once I have my two half reactions, I can start building a battery. So what I'm going to make is what's called a galvanic cell. Now, a galvanic cell is a spontaneous electrochemical cell that is going to use chemical energy to produce electrical energy. The key here is it does it spontaneously. So here are my two half reactions, my, my oxidation and my reduction. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take each half reaction and put it in its own compartment. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a beaker. I'm going to stick a piece of copper metal inside of my beaker. In addition, I'm going to fill up my beaker with copper solution. Now, what you guys will see is I have both components in my oxidation reaction. I have my copper and my copper ions. Now, what's going to happen is this compartment is going to start to produce these electrons. Now, electrons are going to start to come out of my compartment. Now, I can put some kind of machine or some kind of device to measure or use that electrical current before it comes 
to my next compartment. In my next beaker, I'm going to run my reduction reaction. I'm going to place all the components in there. I'm going to have my silver metal. I'm also going to have a solution of silver ions. And remember, this reaction is going to chew up the electrons that are coming in. So it's going to consume my electrons. Now, if I connect it like so, what you guys will note is that I will get an instantaneous burst of current and that's going to stop. And the reason is, is I'm starting to build up negative charge on this side and starting to build up positive charge on this side. So I need to counteract this charge buildup. So what I have to do is connect these two beakers through another route. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and add a salt bridge. What's going to happen is this salt bridge is going to allow ions to flow back and forth. What's going to happen is negative ions are going to go flow into this side and then positive ions are going to go ahead and flow into the other side. And so for my salt bridge, what I chose here is I chose K plus to be my positive ions and NO3 minus to be my negative ions. Now, if I do this, once I bring over one electron, I can bring anions to the other side and that way I don't build up charge. Now, once I do this, I complete my circuit and I will get electricity to flow from my copper side to my silver side. Now, just to get some terminology out of the way, the side where I am doing my oxidation, we call that the anode. The side where I do my reduction, we call that the cathode. So again, a mnemonic device, a red cat and ox. Reduction happens at the cathode. Oxidation happens at the anode. Now, just some other little terminology that you guys might come across. These pieces of metal that I'm sticking in here, sometimes they refer to these as electrodes. Electrodes are something that just carries current. In this case, the solid metals that I have in my reactions are acting as electrodes. Lastly, let's go over some shorthand notation. To describe what's happening in this galvanic cell, what I'm first going to do is I'm going to write a double bar. On the left hand side, I'm going to put all the components of my anode. And on my right hand side, I'm going to put all my cathode components. Again, when you do this shorthand notation, it's always anode, double bar, cathode. So now I'm going to go ahead and describe what's on my anode side. And what I want to describe are all the phases of my material. So on my anode side, the first thing we see is that we have a copper solution. So I can go ahead and put Cu2+, plus, and it's a solution, so I'm going to put aqueous. The next thing I see in my cell is the metal itself. So since it's in a different phase, in the solid phase, I'm going to put a bar to denote that I'm changing phases, and I'm going to put copper solid. And so that's all the stuff on my anode side. Let's take a look at my cathode side. On my cathode side, what you guys will see is I first have a solution of silver ions. So I can go ahead and write that down. And the next component I have is I have my silver metal. So again, since I'm changing phase, solid line followed by what the material is. And so this is describing what is in this picture right here. So in the next few sections, what we're going to be talking about is cell potential or the electromotor force. So basically, this is going to tell you how much energy the galvanic cell has and how much energy you can take out of that cell. Now, to measure that cell or that potential difference, what we're going to use is the unit called the volt. A volt is one joule per coulomb. Now, the way that we measure volts is usually through a voltmeter or a potentiometer. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I hope that made sense. And remember to stay safe, Chem1B.